Hello, and welcome to the conversation on the Daily Burn. I'm your host, Eric Miller. Uh, oh, looks like we might have lost Angie. I'm um, joined by Angie Nixon. Uh, hopefully, she's reconnecting here. Uh, she is from Florida's uh, House District 14. She uh, ran a, a tough primary against a Democratic opponent, squeaked it out uh, by, I guess, maybe 10 or so points um, or 1,000 or so votes. It was pretty close. Um, her district is in northwest, kind of northwest of Jacksonville. And, um, if I'm, you know, so uh, so we're going to talk about her campaign, what was effective. She's in the, her district is a majority black district. So I want to ask her, you know, what Kamala Harris means to her district and, and her, obviously. And, uh, you know, I know there were a lot of get out the vote efforts and so forth. So hopefully she will jump back in here in a second. Um, ask her about progressive politics in Florida, right? There were, boy, there were a lot of candidates. There were a lot of progressives on the ballot in the general election in Florida that, uh, you know, that uh, didn't make it through. Like Adam Christensen, there were, there were a lot in the primaries too. Guido Wise, I had a bunch of them on. Um, so it uh, looks like she's reconnecting here. Hello. Are you back? Are you good? I'm so sorry. I no worries. No answer. worries. I apologize. I'm no worries. I got to tell you. I, on my phone, so. That works. That works. Um, I got to tell you, on Friday, on Friday, I had the great Nina Turner on, and I lost my internet in the middle of the interview, and I'm so humiliated about it. Um, oh, no. But l- luckily, she rescheduled with me, so anyone that watched that, she'll be coming back. But... I was just setting up, you know, how how you made it through your primary, you ran unopposed in the general. Um, let me ask a little bit about, um, obviously, like I said, your your district is a majority black district, and I think Kamala Harris probably strikes a nerve. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that means something. Uh, can you talk about what that means to maybe you and your district? Oh, yeah, it, it means a lot to my district. Um, a lot of people may not know, but... I, so I am from Florida. We did not go blue uh, this year. However, we did go blue in Duval County, right? And <laughs> we pretty much won uh, in our in my district. Uh, we Great. supported uh, a Biden Harris ticket, and so we're super excited. It means a lot. Um, just the lack the lack of representation really affects folks. So when you're able to see someone that looks like you, you're able to strive for more. Um, and so we're super excited to be able to uh, have a black woman uh, as vice president, uh, Kamala Harris. And, you know, even her name alone <laughs> means a lot, right? Because there's, <laughs> She she has a name that is somewhat hard to pronounce, like many people uh, in my district. Like so it's just she is it's, frozen. It's, it's can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? You got me? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Where no did worries. I, what's the last thing you heard? Uh, you were you were talking about uh, you know the the significance of Kamala Harris and and getting out the vote in your district went uh, you know flipped. Right. Um, it's It was very, uh, it means a lot, right? Because when you're able to, especially for the younger kids, um, when you're able to see someone that looks like you in, in places like vice president or president, you think that you can strive to do more. And yeah. it's, it's awesome. I'm super excited. And also just the fact that when you come from a certain community, you also are able to represent that community and possibly if you're an elected official, you know, you want to make sure you pass legislation that helps empower uh, that community from which you came. Um, Or if you know that they're negatively or disproportionately affected by certain things, you want to address those issues more likely than uh, someone who is not from those communities. So we're super excited to be able to uh, support Kamala Harris and president-elect uh joe biden awesome was that a big factor like i know black votes matter was active in your 
district. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm assuming that that probably motivated a lot of a lot of turnout. Can you did you oh, see that? Oh, wow. First so there were several uh, black and brown social justice organizations that did a lot of work uh, within uh Duval County. Uh, We had Black Voters Matter. In addition to New Florida Majority, uh, I was the first lead organizer uh, in Jacksonville from uh, New Florida Majority, uh, which works with Black and Brown communities across the state. Um, And there was also the Florida for All Coalition, which I, um, it was interesting because I previously served as their uh, community organizing director in 2018 um, when we, uh, you know, nominated uh, then Andrew Gillum for governor. Um, We were able to win and um, get him, you know, in the runoff. And so it was different Mm -hmm. for me this year because I was on the other side of the wall. I was a candidate, but like Florida for all played a huge role. Um, It was uh, in a part of that is new Florida majority SEIU, which I am currently a higher education director with the Florida public services union, as well as some other black and Brown organizations that work across the state. And so we were really excited and really worked to push out lower propensity, African-American and, and brown voters, black and brown voters. And so it worked. It really worked in the counties that we uh, that we played in, uh, working with Florida for All. And so they endorsed my candidacies, which I was super excited about. Um, and so, yeah, it was just a great, it was a great experience. That's amazing. Uh, I want to ask a question. I don't want it to come off as cynical, but you know, I, I canvassed a lot for Bernie in South Carolina and, you know, in, in black neighborhoods and stuff. And a lot of what I heard, this is completely anecdotal, was, you know, that was the first time someone had knocked on their door or people only knock on their door when they're looking for the vote and so forth. Right. Um, did you did you you know, did you come up against that? Like, you know, how you know, the was it challenging to get people out to vote who maybe had been disenfranchised because they like I said, they just get touched when they're looking for a vote. Mm-hmm. So what's interesting is, are you talking about my candidacy or in regards to- Just, the, uh, yeah, just in general, yeah, either yours okay. or in general. Yeah. So what you may not know though, Eric, is that I actually worked on Bernie's campaign back in 2016 and I started out in South Carolina. Uh, yeah, I was there, community organizing director um, there too um that year so yay uh team Bernie um but no so what's really interesting here with the Florida for All coalition which my organization is a part of um and then also just in regards to the work the work that I do in the community is we don't just knock on people's doors year round I mean just at during the election season we knock on people's doors year round we try to keep folks engaged uh year round with different community conversations that we have with folks and so um for some I mean we it, w- it was kind of, for some, it was the first time we were knocking on their door in regards to like a presidential election, but we always try to keep them engaged, right? Um, of course, there may have been a few that have fallen in the cracks and we hadn't, um, and it was the first time we knocked on their door. Um, but see, we had we come from a place of talking to people about um, the fact that their power is in their vote. Um, right. And so they were excited in regards to just the messaging <laughs> that we were uh, bringing and presenting to them. Um, And also just the education, right? We don't just ask people to vote. We actually educate them on the importance of voting and and their power and how we have to hold elected officials accountable year round. Um, And then we also just teach them the history of suppression, the history of, 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 how they suppress our our vote and how we have to come together to build power to get the things that we need and that we deserve and yeah. folks are really receptive to that when you're talking to people year round so news flash folks uh and parties uh you should continually have a conversation and open dialogue uh with with voters year round with residents year round and also yeah. you should talk to people that um may not even be eligible to vote because they have friends and family that are eligible to vote and they are right. able to right. when they're engaged they get try to get everyone else engaged and vote on their behalf so 
Right. Yeah. Here, here. Well said. Um, so that organization is called Florida for all. Is that, Florida is that the for name all, you're saying? And it's comprised. Yeah. It's comprised of SEIU, New Florida Majority, the Dream Defenders, which is the organization that actually um, is, is comprised. It's a lot of black and brown youth. And they're the ones that got George Zimmerman arrested uh, when they blockaded the sheriff's department down in Stanford. Um, it's also comprised of Organized Florida, um, Jobs cool. with Justice, Faith in Florida, uh, and they they uh, they make up uh, Florida for All, the Florida awesome. for All coalition. So, yeah, so I don't so go Google Florida for All and give them yes. some of your time and give them some of your money and keep yes, doing give so. Give them right? some of your money. <laughs> they support. It makes a difference, right? It, yeah, and it makes a difference to do that not just during the election cycle, right? To do that in primaries, right, to right. do that year round, you know, year round, year round. To stay engaged. And yep. so, like, also, yep, just, I'm sorry, just a super, because I'm just super excited about the work that Florida for All did. Um, and you know, unfortunately, because of COVID, um, the presidential, so Vice President Biden, and, uh, I'm sorry, Vice President. <laughs> Vice President Harris and President Vice President Elect Harris and President Elect <laughs> Biden, um, they didn't necessarily knock on a lot of doors until the end um, due right. to COVID. However, the Florida for All Coalition actually, I heard they, they knocked over on over a million doors across the state of Florida. Oh, wow. um, and so wow, that's wow, just, wow. yeah, that's just awesome, which is why um, in the areas that they worked in, they were able to um, actually. Uh, win some seats, um, the areas that they targeted. So they did great, great. work. Yeah, I, I wonder, um, and, you know, I'm, I'm asking you about Florida politics as if you know all the nuances statewide. And, you know, but, you know, I'm curious about uh, the, um, like, there is a thing, like the ballot measure of the $15 minimum wage mm -hmm. passed, right? Yeah. And yet Joe Biden did not win Florida, right? Can you explain mm -hmm. that sort of discrepancy? What, what's your opinion on why that is? Folks, SEIU played a huge role in that. And big props to my organization, but we put uh, millions of dollars behind that. We did a lot of organizing around the, the $15 mm -hmm. uh, minimum wage amendment. Um, we 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 knocked on doors. We had an aggressive communication strategy. Shout out to Unique Ortiz, who's our comms director um, in the state for that. And so we put in a lot of work. And again, right. working with folks year round, educating them on the on on the fact that fifteen dollars an hour would help change their way of life is what won it right and so mm -hmm. um that's what we did and we turned out we turned out our base for it um and some yeah. other folks because we educated them on on what happened and yeah. i just I, I feel that's what needs to happen right we need to continue to have conversations with people and educate them and and we win right so do you and, I, and I guess also, so like, if if we so sometimes in red states, the word progressive is, is like, ah, don't say that. But right, right. we all, no matter Republican, Democrat, Green Party, whatever, right, Libertarian, folks care, folks care about how much food they can put on their tables, right? Folks care right. about whether they have a roof over their head. Folks care about the quality of schools that their kids attend. And when you're able to break down um, your message in a way that resonates to someone's personal values and make it your shared values, you're able to win. And that's yeah. what we did. You're here. Yeah, that, I mean, I, yeah, I guess my question in that was, and, and neither of us have the answer, but you know, I think if Joe Biden, that was in his platform, but if he had leaned into it more, if he had a campaign yeah, on it Yeah, he would have won. I think he right. would have won our state. Yeah. But yeah. I think he so, didn't want to possibly, you know, he wanted to be a little centrist, uh, a little, my, you know, bring him to the yeah. center. Um, he was afraid of alienating a base of folks um, that are towards the right. Um he would have won the state, but that's that's why we won that because you know we 
talk to we pay play to share people share interests their values yeah. yep yeah there's a lesson to be learned in that uh you know running a bold policy right don't back off it right like maybe he don't want do it. not it. lean into it like popular. you said lean into it here here um let me ask a little bit about so you i said it while you were offline that you know you had a had a, a competitive primary but then you ran unopposed in the general um and you know so here you are your uh, representative elect i guess you would say right um mm -hmm. and you know, your platform is you know a lot of progressive stuff right um right you know the, the living wage obviously is there let's just hit on a few of them criminal justice reform and bail reform mm -hmm. uh what do you hope to do about that when you get into the florida house so definitely want to look at um ending cash bail specifically uh you know starting small maybe because i'm just in the red state <laughs> but ending cash bail for uh for misdemeanor offenses non-violent offenses and things like that because it just doesn't make sense that some people uh you some some people sit in jail because they can't afford to get out right mm -hmm. and there's no game they may not even be guilty and that that disrupts right their their livelihood that disrupts their family that some of them are the sole breadwinners and so want to definitely look at ending cash bail in the state um because it's a big it's a big profit industry for certain folks and so but it really negatively impacts black and brown communities and that's something that definitely needs to change um also you know private prisons is still somewhat of a thing here in the state and that's something that definitely needs to end it's modern day slavery and it's something yeah, it that is. is just just disgusting um and i just cannot go along with um we had <laughs> I spoke out um, during my campaign because just the 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 lack of transparency at some of these private prisons and their COVID cases were going up, um, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's just uh, actually it's just ridiculous. Like you, you a for profit prison in this day and age is just it's just wrong, right? Um, and just all so those are some of the things that I'm I'm really interested in in dealing yeah. with. Yeah, I think that's great. And you, you've also talked about uh, one, the one, the, the phrasing was interesting on your website. It, if I remember correctly, neighborhood stabilization. Uh, uh -huh. I'm assuming there's, I'm, I'm assuming there's a lot of components to that. You know, what does that mean, and, yeah. and what do you hope to do? You know, in that regard, right. talk about that. So, in regards to that, that's not necessarily something that you can you can do some legislation around it, but it's more so being super involved in the community, which I like to pride myself on the fact that I am super involved. Um, it's about making sure that you have a strong constituency services in your office, because not only do I serve as a legislator, um, but my office uh, will be serving as a strong constituency service office. Um, and I actually, I'm a former district aide to a state representative, to a Florida state representative. Um, and that's, I, that's what I learned, right? Like the unemployment system here was, is ridiculous. And the fact that our website crashed and, and folks were waiting months and months and months to get uh, their unemployment due to being let go uh, from COVID it is an issue. And so my my office will help walk people through that process and try to speed it up um, so that they won't get stuck, things like that. Also, um, thinking about like neighborhood associations and the fact that the squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? And so there are some issues that are happening in neighborhoods, but um, they don't necessarily know where to go and who to talk to, but if they right. had a neighborhood association um, and they had, it's so funny because my staffer, um, oh my God, I have a staffer now, but my staffer, because we started on last week, right? Um, I haven't been sworn in yet, but we started on last week, but that's what I told her today. I was like, I need you to figure out all the neighborhood associations and homeowners association groups in my district, because I want to have a direct line of communication with them so that I know what their yeah. issues are and, and their concerns are. Um, I'm also yeah. creating a district advisory committee so that not only do I decide the type of legislation that needs uh, to happen within my district, but I want to be advised on that by, by um, 
faith leaders, business business owners, um, residents, parents, students, right? And so I the the people elected me, and I need to listen to the will of the people. And the way that I do that is through my advisory committee, and then also helping to stabilize whatever issues that they may have, trying to stabilize the community. God, that's so. That is so. That's how it should be. And thank you for mm -hmm. doing that and saying that, right? You know, you, you know, when you're talking about organizing in your history of, you know, working for the previous rep and so forth, right? Um, but just being uh, a sponge to hearing the issues and proactively out doing that outreach and that organizing, you know, mm -hmm. that makes all the difference for a successful representative. You know, you're not, you know, you're not a corporate puppet. You're not taking like a billion dollars from, uh, you know, Exxon Mobil or whatever. You're, you know, you're asking the homeowners association, what's up and what are the deals, right? And you're, you're a good faith actor, even before you're, like you said, sworn in. And I think that's, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's incredible. So, you know, congratulations to the Florida House 14 and getting Angie, you know, to represent you because, uh, you know, that, I think it's wonderful. And it reminds me of uh, like Corey Bush, right? You saw Corey Bush, like she was out in the streets, you know, the people knew her before they saw her name on the ballot. Right. And that matters. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have, you know, a history of, you know, advocacy and so forth as well. And, you know, uh, I just think that's absolutely incredible. Uh, what is the what is the um, kind of makeup of the Florida House? Is that as divided as it is at the presidential level? Like, <laughs> is it a Republican controlled house? Like, what, what are you up against? Right. You have so, allies. So the Republicans, um, they they are in the majority in both chambers. Hmm. And that is what we're up against. So yeah. I will be having some conversations and building some relationships with uh, Republicans, which is not a problem, right? Um, to try to get things passed for my community. Um, and, you know, again, like I stated earlier, at the end of the day, folks care about the food being on their table, roofs over their head. Right. And um, I'm going to have to really lean in uh, on that and on even on, on strong legislation. But I'm also going to have to lean in and ask my community to help me push, <laughs> push those other representatives and those other senators to pass some of the legislation, especially yeah. if it's bold and progressive, which is what's needed. Um, and that's why I'm kind of I'm happy I get to take a community organizing approach, right? Um, and I'm going to do so. And folks are going to wonder why are they getting all these phone calls and all these emails and maybe these people, you know, requesting meetings as much as they did this year because you, yeah, District 14 elected a community organizer. And I know, <laughs> I know how to agitate my community and get them involved uh, to try awesome. to get things that they need. And that's how it's supposed to be, right? Um, you know, I, I hadn't thought of it until we're just talking right here, but there was uh, the last cycle, there was that felon uh, voter restoration uh, bill yes. that uh, passed and Desmond Mead, if I remember his name yeah, right. And, uh, you know, right. Amendment yeah. four. Right. And then, and then the Republican House just did some bullshit shenanigans, right? I, want, I fear, are they going to, any fear of them doing the same thing for the minimum wage? Um, so one of the legislators in leadership stated that they were going to listen to the will of the people. Mm. However, we don't know. So we're going to we're going to we're going to be ready. <laughs> yeah. We're ready. Um, and yeah. I'm in a lot of conversations now um, that we're having just to try to be um, be on the offense. So we're preparing for whatever. Um Lord, we're we're gonna be ready. Great, great. Um, I mean, any other uh, like, what are you excited about? I mean, we touched on a little bit of you know criminal justice reform, you know, and so forth, uh, economic investment, whatever. Like, what what is there something you can't wait to get onto the house of the floor and start uh, raising hell about or whatever, you know, sort of drawing attention to? Like, what are you most anxious to sink your teeth into? Um, I think I'm most anxious to sink my teeth into like two things, right? So figuring out, 
how to ensure that our communities get the resources that they need as it relates to COVID because the numbers are starting to surge again. Um, and I am a survivor of COVID. Um, thank goodness mine wasn't uh, severe. I had a, a moderate case. Um, but I also know folks that died from COVID. And of course, it, it, it does uh, negatively impact communities of color um, more so than any other community. So I want to make sure that we uh, pass legislation to ensure that we're able to provide those communities with the re resources that they need um, uh, in regards to health care, <laughs> accessible yeah. health care. Um, and so like with that, along the lines of me wanting, I, I previously served um, in a leadership role in regards to expansion of Medicaid here in the state of Florida. Uh, where we could have expanded Medicaid to um, over 300,000 folks here in the state, um, low-income uh, individuals, and um, something that really means a lot. I have been on Medicaid before in my younger days um, yeah. when I was trying to, you know, get a good job, and I had a, a, a little girl um, on my hip. Uh, and so there's a lot of working class folks. Heck, our minimum wage is right now is eight dollars and fifty six cents. And then it's you know it's gonna go up because of the amendment. But just imagine that that's a poverty wage, unfortunately. Yeah. And and then the cost of living in Florida in certain areas is super high. And so folks, um, you know, a lot of folks would have benefited from getting that uh, Medicaid expanded. Um, yeah. So that's something that I'm looking at doing. And then also just uh, working towards paid family leave, um, especially as it relates to, to moms. I'm a new mom, newer mom again. I have a two month old. Um, Congratulations. And so I can only imagine um, women who work and have a baby and then have to immediately go back to work. It's yeah. tough. It's really tough, and um, that that type of thing needs to be addressed. Here, here. Uh, yeah, we actually were originally going to talk about two months ago, and then you gave birth. So, congratulations! That's why we rescheduled you. after the election. Um, you know, it, boy, you said, did you say eight fifty six is a minimum wage? Like that's even, like even that it's low is offensive, but it, that it's fifty six, it's like a like eight sixty <laughs> was, right. right. was a bridge too far, right? Like it's 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 insulting that it's even that specific of a, a number. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Medicaid expansion. I'm, you know, that, you know, it's one of those things, you know, this I'm preaching to the choir here. Like how could a Republican, you know, a Republican voter, let's say, you know, vote, you know, for a representative that's going to uh, fight against that. Right. Like, you know, I don't understand how that doesn't pass, like how people can't see who is obstructing, the passage of Medicaid expansion, you know, you just said you're on the front lines fighting it. Right. And, you know, when you talk to a constituent, you know, if, if I needed that and it was life-saving in a pandemic, especially, right. Uh, people are losing their jobs, need healthcare now more than ever. Um, you know, and a Republican house vetoes it or blocks it. You know, I, I couldn't imagine going and voting R in that situation. I, it's inexplicable. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. So uh, enough of my soapboxing. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, I can't wait to see what you do in the Florida house. I'm going to, you know, keep an eye on you and stuff. Anything else that you want to hit on that we didn't talk about? Um, No, not really. Just want to um, encourage folks to, uh, you know, take a breath, breathe a sigh of relief. Whew. We got rid of a racist. Uh -huh, out of the highest office <laughs> yeah. in the land. However, do not get complacent. Um, we mm. have to do more. Uh, we did lose some seats. Uh, a lot of some folks lost some seats uh, locally and nationally, right? And yeah. Um, yeah. we can't get complacent. In two years, there are going to be some more seats that are up, and we have to we have to continually work and continually organize and continue to talk to people and really educate folks um, and get them involved uh, and letting them know <laughs> know what our shared values are right again when you break things down in a way 
that addresses someone's personal values um, and allowing them to see like that this person doesn't mean you that well and you need to vote for bold and progressive uh, policies and legislators, um, that, that tends to change. So we got to continue to agitate and continue to organize. Don't get complacent. Yes, celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. But let's hold all these elected officials accountable. Please hold me accountable. Please hold the new president-elect and vice president-elect accountable um, so that we can get the things that we need and deserve. Yeah. I, you know, I want to I want to go back to something just to highlight it, because you mentioned it. Um, so you were you were pregnant while running a campaign and you gave birth yep. while running a campaign. Um, you know, I'm sure there you know, that's one of those things, you know, I don't know entirely your history, but, you know, working class person, I'm assuming you're not a billionaire or whatever. Right. You're juggling a lot of uh, life's uh, challenges like we all do. Right. Um, right. Can you talk about the challenges of, you know, that and you know what wh how did you make it through that and you know, what what i guess what i'm getting at is i wouldn't i wouldn't want anybody else to be deterred by that because you can right you can do these things, right talk about yes, that a little you bit. can do it you just have to learn how to manage your time and also just have a strong network of people a strong support system um i am blessed to have a great partner. Um, he's there for me. Um, I'm blessed to have a daughter who's grown up in the movement, <laughs> awesome. who knows awesome. how to organize herself. Uh, when she comes to meetings, she knows to grab, grab a clipboard and get people signed up and things like that. Um, but like, I am unapologetically who I am. As you see, I have on my, my head wrap because my head don't look too good, but you know, I'm a working class mom. It's all good, um, right? And right. And so um I have um I have five kids now. So two are mine and then three are bonus kids. But I took them everywhere that I went, right? I took them to um I took my daughter to rallies. Of course, we were socially distant. Um, I'm the only one that got COVID, but I got COVID from someone who we know it was uh it was, mm. I know how I got it. Um, but, um, you know, just do you. <laughs> and that's the point, right? Like they, they want, there's a, there's a group of folks that want to discourage, um, working class people from running from running for office. And I ain't mm -hmm. with it. Um, like be unapologetic in who you are and just go yeah. for it. Just make sure you try to have a support system who can support you throughout the process. But again, like I said, I take, um, luckily my, uh, my fiance is here with me right now. He has the baby, she's crying, but there's been times the other day, like the past two weeks, I've been on zoom calls with my, with my daughter, like right here talking and cooing and I'm having a conversation with, uh, voters or, uh, with different organizations and we have to make way for that. Right. If we want yeah to change the way our country is, we have to be open to having diverse people um, here and, and involved and be open to whatever their family life structure is. And if they have to bring their babies or, you know, they have to do that. If, if they're um, someone who has a disability um, and we have to, uh, make uh concessions i have to figure that out uh then we have to do that and so go for it don't let anything discourage you at all no matter what your education is i only have a bachelor's degree in political science like i'm i've been working on my master's for 10 years so it does not matter who you are or what you do as long as you have a heart for the people and you're passionate you're honest you're ethical go for it Awesome. 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 Well, yeah, I mean, like I said, we were scheduled to talk two months ago and, and you were well worth the wait. I think you're amazing. Uh, you know, Florida House 14 is lucky to have you. Uh, like I said, I can't wait to see what you do. And, you know, uh, that that stuff is inspiring. What you're saying is so true. There are there's like this barrier to entry for working class people to run. Right. So that's why I wanted to highlight that. It's you know, it shouldn't be right. And it doesn't need to be. You know, and right, and and I, you know, I want to just say, I, so the majority of my donations came from small dollar donations, small dollar 
uh, donors. And there was some, there were several folks that donated a dollar to my campaign. Um, and those were the donations that meant the world to me because people were making ends meet. They were struggling, but they felt um, it right to donate to my campaign. And I, I was honored and humbled by that. And so, you know, I did not know. I knew how much money I needed to raise. I didn't know how I was going to do that. I, but I leaned on the grassroots. I leaned on working class people to help raise money for my campaign and I wind up actually raising um over 120 nearly $150,000 and the majority of that again was from small dollar donors people five dollars here three dollars and 33 cents was another donation that I remember but they were small donors and um you know I I, you have to get involved as well. That helped just me having a grassroots uh, background organizing. Um, but, you know, where people are ready for change. And so super excited that that's that uh, some people have reached out to me and said, you know, they want to run for office now, seeing that I was able to do it because, you know, like I said, I, I am I, I formerly worked for a district uh, representative for a Florida State representative. But I I was not the one that folks had chose to run. They didn't believe that I was gonna win because here I am. I'm you know I'm this activist, this organizer who goes against the grain, right? Who's yelling inside of a um a megaphone, right? Who doesn't right. kiss the ring? Right. And so I was not the one that folks chose. And but the people chose me. And that's what matters, yeah. like making sure yeah. that you're there for the people and that you, uh, you, you're you pushing legislation, that you want to push legislation and your platform is about the people. And that's how, that's why I won. You're here. Yeah. It's about earning the votes and you've been earning the votes even before you ran, right? And you'll continue mm-hmm. to earn the votes when you're advocating for them on the floor. Um, let me just mention, so, you know, AngieNixon.com, you know, I'm sure you haven't turned off the mechanism to take donations. So she's going to run again. So, you know, if you have 333 or a dollar or $5, you know, by all means, send it Angie's way, you know, donate a dollar for a month, right? And just keep it recurring or whatever, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And then also check out that Florida for all, but uh, AngieNixon.com, you know, let's make sure she, uh, you know, she stays in office, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. I, it's been a real pleasure to chat with you again. Congratulations on, on your uh, newborn. Um, you know, like I said, I can't wait to talk to you again and call you representative Nixon and see everything you do. And uh, for the people of Florida's 14th, uh, you know, Godspeed. Thank you so much, Eric. I appreciate it. Thank y'all. Thank you. Bye. Bye.